Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. So let's see what's in store for us this week. It's been a while since I had Nick or showcased anything from Nick, so it's great to see that he did another video. And it, in it, he basically just goes through and suggests of how he, after using Obsidian for a number of years, would start off if he had to do it all over again today. And he looks at it in a way of no folders, no imports, no pressure, just five notes, one simple prompt, and basically a whole new way of looking at data and your information. So without going to the overly complex things of plugins and CSS and this and that, just five notes and away you go. And it just goes to showcase that how easy Obsidian can be to use and also how complicated you can make it um, from your own doing. So definitely worthwhile checking this out if you're unsure of Obsidian and see what Nick's been up to. So thank you for that, Nick. Great video. Also, um, Obsidian, the team has recently announced that for Android, they'll, rec they'll give us a bit more permission. So at the moment, basically with Obsidian and Android, you need to give full file access and they're looking to tweak that so that you've got more control. So in the upcoming releases, they will either give us a choice to put it on the device storage, so it requires additional permission, allows Obsidian data to be accessed by other apps and works with third-party singing tools, or just the Obsidian app folder uh, will delete data if you uninstall Obsidian and your data will not be accessible to other apps. So do check out the Twitter post, which I will include a link to it, because there's a lot of comments on the pros and cons of this um, tweak that Obsidian are going to do. But I think it's a good step in the right direction, just giving us more control over what can be seen by what. So that was good. And then last up, or just before last up, uh, Vlad, he did a video on what is Canvas and how he uses it, and basically just goes through a real life demonstration of how Vlad uses the Canvas mod within Obsidian just to collect, organize, and find information about a project or topic. And I thought this was great because it just goes through and showcases a real life example rather than a fictitious um, example where you just dump things and link them. This is actually one where he goes through it and just assists us in understanding how we can use a Canvas mode just to make uh, the retrieval and organization of information a lot easier. So thank you for that, Vlad. And you've certainly inspired me to have another good look at Canvas mode. I'm not sure why I'm calling it Canvas mode, it's just Canvas, but anyway. And Vlad also did a video on how he's using the homepage plugin within Obsidian. So it's basically the one-stop shop for accessing his various different Recently, a client and asked... And he just goes through, sets it up, how to get it set up with the plugin, some of the settings that he uses, uh, quite a lot of the settings that he goes through, and then he showcases, although a bit masked out, how he, can, how he actually uses the Obsidian Home plugin. So thank you for that as well. Very worthwhile. And I think it is great just to have a home page within uh, or a home dashboard within Obsidian. And last up, finally, of Obsidian is one major deal breaker. So OP basically wrote, it's great, it's amazing, um, but it's got one major flaw. And that is that you cannot handwrite uh, your notes or you can't annotate it with a stylus. And basically he's been looking for a solution, but the notes are MD and that's it, you can't simply annotate them. Um, a lot of the comments are uh, use this plugin, the LMK I think it is, or various different other plugins or ink plugin. And one of the comments that stood out to me was just be careful because yes, you can use a plugin, but just be aware that the plugin might not be maintained forever. So you might find yourself with something that works now, but in a number of years or down the line, it's gonna stop working because a plugin developer is not maintaining it anymore. So then you're left with a flaw in your workflow. So if that is a critical aspect of your workflow and you do need handwriting, then maybe your best bet is to look at a different app, maybe OneNote or something like that, just so that you're not left in the dark later on with something such as a breaking change to your workflow. If it is such a critical thing, if not, tweak your workflow uh, and make it work for you. But I wouldn't suggest hacking um, Obsidian just to temporarily make something work for you. So that was that with capacities. So there was a post on I finally started use, using capacities and I, I should have used it sooner. And this basically looks at he's been OP has been using various different note taking systems and apps in the past and there was always something missing and now they believe they found the holy grail and that is capacities. And he just goes through of why capacities, how he came across it and why it works from their point of view. So definitely worthwhile having a look into it. 
um, if you haven't used capacities already or you're wondering about it and why it's attracting a lot of people. So it's definitely a great note-taking app, so do check out the blog post. And on the same vein, we do have why Obsidian users are flocking to capacities in 2025. So a bit of a clickbait title, but the article is very good as well because it just goes through of, again, why capacities for them is the, the main note-taking app and why it's so much better than Obsidian. And the main one is I can be productive right away using capacities unlike Obsidian's which needs some tuning. But as we saw from Nick's video in the introduction, that's not quite the case. You can make Obsidian as simple or as complicated as you like. So I don't necessarily agree that you can just get easily started with capacities. I'd probably find it a lot easier to just get started in Obsidian, control N, start writing, and off you go. Whereas with capacities, you need to set up the object, set up this, set up that, but each to their own. And uh, one of the things I did want to ask was, do you agree with people uh, that are jumping to capacities from Obsidian? Or is it just an illusion in the sense that Obsidian users are maybe saying, I'm starting using capacities, and then when they realize that actually it doesn't have all of the plugin system, it doesn't, it's not local only, um, it doesn't have canvas, doesn't have this, that, the other, they slowly and quietly come back to Obsidian without announcing their return. So I thought that was a bit of an interesting one. And then Toolfinder, they did a review or an updated review on capacities and why it hits different. So definitely do check this one out because it's an update of one that he did a few months or a year ago or so. So it just goes through with what he thinks of capacities. Tana, Tana's up next. So updates of 2025. So Braggy goes through the video, uh, in our video, uh, of the things that you might have missed within the various different updates that Tana has announced. Tana debuted two. And if you just go through, you've got the mobile voice memos, side menus, calendars, progress bars, aesthetics, related content, publish, AI features, super tags, meeting agents, and professional workflows. So there's a lot going on there. So definitely do check that out in case you've missed anything of Tana and what they've released. And it is good because Bragg actually goes through a few examples of what the updates mean and how you can make them work for you. So very good video. And thank you as usual to Bragg and the team for posting. And then Tana team announced a bit of an update to the desktop app, which will include title bar now matches the color, meeting notifications, um, change menu items, fix preventing window going to sleep, um, and various different other things. So do definitely check that out and get your app updated uh, to get the benefit of all these updates that the team are pushing through. And at the same time, they also released the latest update, which includes a few improvements, uh, especially on the images side, a few fixes and a couple of information points as well. So have a look through that in case there's anything of use. And sticking with Tana and our updates, they're changing the way the meeting agent and auto tagging meeting notes works. So basically what they're gonna do is major changes um, and including botless meeting note takers, which I think is great. Uh, Cause for the time being, what you would have is you would have a Tana meeting uh, bot appear within your, within your Teams call, Zoom call, whatever it might be. Now you can have botless note taking meet, uh, botless meeting note takers. I'll get that right. Uh, just basically to basic take notes of meetings without having permission issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what they will do as well at the same time is they will change the way it works. So rather than automatically tag various different things, for example, persons, companies, countries, they will now give you the option to. Um, basically tag them if, if you still wish to. So once your meeting finishes, you get the transcript, you get whatever it is the, uh, from the meeting notes, and you can go through it and tag them as you wish, rather than Tana automatically tagging things that you may not want to tag and pull at your graph. So I think that's a good change, and it just means that you have to actually go through your notes rather than just willy-nilly um, having a graph with lots of notes that you never look at. And they will also temporarily not link to the transcript because there's a few issues and they're looking at better ways of building a solution for that. So just keep that one in mind so it's not going to link directly to the transcript. And last up with Tana is project, dashboard, project dashboards for Tana template. So this is a free template, um, just basically goes through, manage multiple projects with clients using hubs, widgets and micro apps. And it is a free template. And you can see how it works by looking at the quick video that Simon posted below, just to see if, it, if it's in, of interest to you and you can make it work for you and it'll fit into your workflow. So I think that's good. Rather than having to download it, test it out, you can actually see it live before doing so. So thank you for that, Simon. 
Logseek, uh, they've got performance improvements to the DB importer. So CRD Walker has been working on improving the importing of files into the DB version, and it basically, on a 4K page graph or so, it basically reduces the import time by about 25%, so that'll just make it easier once the DB version is finally released in some sort of beta um, stage, we can actually start importing notes to it and we should see it being much quicker. There is unfortunately no indication of when the first app um, or desktop app will be released for the desktop version, so for now you still have to use test.logseek.com. And I thought it was good, so a plugin if you want to chat directly with your notes. So you can see here the notes, basically favorite food, and he's just asking questions of what's my favorite food, blah, blah, blah. So it just goes through your knowledge graph and you can chat directly to it. So I thought this was great, although there's very little information of it, apart from this YouTube video. So hopefully uh, they're gonna post a bit more information of what stage it's at, how it actually works, and how you can download it and install it. Because I thought it was, it was very useful and a good way of interacting with your graph. Next up is AppFly. So OP did a very good post on how to host all of your data and plug into LLMs later. Uh, basically a very detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough. Uh, and he uses AppFly, but I'm sure you can use other apps as well. And what he's basically going through is self-hosted AppFly cloud with a minimal instance of DigitalOcean, creating a generalist knowledge management that's AI ready, secure, scalable, cost-effective, and basically easy to use. And especially with this guide, I have to say it does go through and it is it is on medium, but it is free. Um, it's not behind a paywall and you can go through. Okay, it gives a bit of an introduction, gives why they believe self-hosting app flow is cost effective. Um, especially if you look at these sorts of numbers from a annual, annual perspective for 10 users and goes through very detailed step by step, which buttons to click, what to what to put in, various different codes to run very detailed step-by-step step. and thank you for this OP for um, or to the uh, to the author of it for actually setting it up and then you finally get to AppFloy, how to set it up, get to the domain, what buttons to press again, what to put in and off you go. So very very useful definitely do check that out if you're interested in self-hosting your data especially using AppFloy and hats off to the author for that so thank you. Any type, um, no updates from the app itself, apart from the alpha where they're still going through the changes of how uh, various different types work. But I thought this was useful just to showcase what capacities is, is capable of achieving. So you can see OP, they basically did various different databases uh, that they've got going on, pleasures, ideas, spiritual life, and various different things of um, media hubs, relationships, visions, goals, etc. So a way that you can set up any type just to make it aesthetically pleasing for you. So I thought that was that was useful. Heptabase, they've um, updated their mobile app and now you can take voice notes and it will transcribe them directly within um, Heptabase automatically. So you can see here in the mobile app, new voice note, start speaking, blah, blah, blah. It's updating today's journal in live real time and in a matter of seconds, it's updated, and there you've got your text. So it's just another way of doing voice input, which I've noticed a lot of more PKM apps are going towards the voice input, input rather than just the written form. So that's very useful to see. And the flip side of that is voice output. So what Remnot has done is they are using now text-to-speech using the premium 11 Labs voices. So basically, it allows you, if you're language learning, this is perfect because it allows you to understand or to listen to phrases and words using accurate pronunciation. So it's perfect for language learning or vocab learning. So thank you and great update from the Remnot team. And last but not least is Timer. So in their latest update, uh, they're looking at query filters. So let's just have a quick look through the video here. So. How it works, you've got the query here, and as you can see, as he's writing, it's giving hints of what might be missing, and it'll just give us an indication of sorts of things that we will be able to query, and at what level we will be able to query notes. So I think this is great, although unfortunately, there is still no update of when the app will be released, apart from as soon as possible, slash in the next few weeks, slash um, when time allows, slash when it's ready. So hopefully, we should see that one up soon enough. 
And that's it for this week. So thank you very much for being here and I shall see you next week. Thanks. Bye.